create a model uh, of what happened using the times in those light in that light curve. Uh, I said, well, where was Io? Where was Europa? When did this begin? And so I came up with it was about 3.6 arc seconds away when the dimming began. Uh, that is equivalent to uh, about six Io radii to the edge of Europa. And uh, so I've kind of modeled here that the dimming began as Europa enters this area and then it brightens as it exits. So this is, was my basic uh, atmospheric model. I created a set of predictions for an event coming up the following week, uh, September 1st, and I'll be darned if it didn't happen again. And so uh, the, uh, the, the, I created a set of times and created, this is a two hour, this is 200 million words. So this is a two hour video because the event was much slower, so I actually had to record longer to get out there at those wing areas where this may have occurred. So the actual occultation, uh, you see I have highlighted, and I'll have this throughout all my light curves, the, the actual mutual event is within the dashed lines. The anomalous or extra event is outside of those lines. So, so uh, another thing I'll point quickly, notice it's asymmetric in the slope. So that's something that also became uh, obvious in a lot of the curves. So we'll get to that in a second. So after getting this repeat, I said, okay, now it's time to have other people observe it and see if uh, they come up with the same thing, or is this something inherent to just my equipment, my camera, is it just me, or, or is it obvious? So I, I formed something I called the IO Atmospheric Extinction Project, and I put out a global plea to ask people to just, uh, I, I created these predictions based on uh, the mutual events, and I put extinction start and extinction end approximately, and I said that there's 10 to 20 minutes of errors on either side of this because this is a guess. We're guessing at something that uh, may or may not uh, be there. I had no idea. So uh, the light curve started rolling in. Um, 11 observers became foolish enough to try this in four countries. I got 53 data sets from 28 events. I didn't expect that kind of response. But it, it, it showed everything that we needed to see, which is that for the, the typical light curve response for IO events uh, was this right here, uh, where you have what I call the lowered shoulders. So you're going to hear a term where I call lowered shoulders and raised shoulders. Uh, so both IO and unexpectedly, I didn't expect this, Europa had the same event, had a dimming trend on outside of the occultations, but Ganymede events did not. Ganymede events had what I call raised shoulders or an anomalous brightening on each side instead of a dimming on each side of the occultation. Um, this, by the way, uh, I probably should have clipped that out there because it's something confusing, but it was so cool. This was Io, uh, this right here is Io emerging from Jupiter's shadow just before the occultation. So that's the extra event. So this was sort of a double event too. That's why you see two events up in the title of the plot. So this was our typical response. Uh, there were some atypical responses we investigated later. We'll talk about that later. But after the series of, of experiments, it clearly became, it was camera independent, it was recording method independent, it was reduction method independent. And the only thing that repeated in all of our experiments was the extinction th theory. Um, now, then came the question of, so if, the di if uh, what is normal? What should be a normal response for two merging intensities of near equal in intensity? So I set up a simulation. This is a very crude attempt to set up two heads of a pen across the room, illuminate them with a single white light source, had them merge and come apart. And indeed, it would seem that the raised shoulders in this simulation seem to be normal. Now, that presents itself as a problem, too. We'll get to that. Uh, you know, why was it just flat until the occultation? We'll, I, we'll get to that. So I plotted my simulation on top of a Ganymede occultation and indeed is a pretty darn good fit. Some of this doesn't fit because of the fact, again, it was a crude setup in my, uh, in my sort of optical bench uh, and there was wiggling because I was hand turning and crank real slowly to, to simulate an occultation. Uh, but you see it's a pretty darn good fit. So if that's normal, uh, what's, the, what's the source of the nonlinear increase as they merge. So 
uh, the Ray Shoulders represents this nonlinear camera response. Uh, so my preliminary investigation was I said, all right, let's look at two area disks. What happens as they merge? Well, you have the outer rings of the area disk that at some point fall off to an intensity that they're no longer detected by the CCD camera. They fall below the detection threshold. But what happens is, is that if you get a second area disk coming along, in the middle you start getting overlapping or doubling up of photons. At some point, you drive the, the, the intensity rate up where suddenly they're being detected, whereas previously they weren't. At least that was my theory. So then I went to look for it, and sure enough, I could find when I looked at the intensity uh, curve here, and, and, and this I noticed but didn't know what it was early on when I did this intensity plot. But you see the baseline um, intensity right here, but you notice in the middle between the two, it doesn't go to baseline like it should. So here was my first clue that uh, I may be onto something. Well, then I decided to load up a video, put it in an image processor, and let's look and see what's going on. So this false color uh, image of Isle and Europa indeed shows a light bridge forming right in the middle here, showing intensities that shouldn't be there. They should either be blue or black at some point right there, but instead, indeed, you have extra light between the spots. So uh, these are what we refer to as PDE, or photon doubling effect. Um, and as the two merged, uh, as the two spots merge, that area grows. I have another plot where over time I show that the area in between gains in intensity. And so that is the anomalous brightening trend you find uh, in what's called a normal occultation. So, so in the preliminary uh, conclusions there that PDE uh, causes the, uh, the raised wings, so then the lowered wings do represent an anomaly. So where's the source of the loss of light? I need to solve that one next. I'm take a breath. Everybody stare at this. This single method of viewing our intensities gave me the entire answer. Io was in front of Europa. Here it is at two different times, 314 and 326 for this particular event. And you notice Europa dimmed relative to Io. So the object that was behind indeed is the source of the dimming. So this was one of the, one of the ones that, this removes, because this is the raw view, it removes reduction method, it, re it removes the camera because there's no way the camera can respond to, to one moon and not to the other equally. So th this was a telltale, uh, uh, very poignant uh, method right there. But I'll show you, we found it in about eight different independent methods. I'll show you a couple more. I'm going to refer to two methods of photometry here. Individual photometry where I was able to put a measurement aperture around the moons individually. And then combined photometry where I had to put a large circle around both moons so that it, it, it represented an area to where during the entire event, both moons stayed in as they traveled within that area. So there are two methods. The combined method is the way we typically do mutual occultation reductions anyway, because there's a limit to individual photometry. At some point, they're too close to be able to in get individual intensity data. Um, fortuitously, for these events, these dimmings started while they were still pretty far separated, about like that. So they were pretty wide spacing, so we were lucky to get stuff like this. Um, so here is where I start my investigation into the dimming trend. So the blue line represents the combined intensity. That's where I've got it around both moons. And you see that somewhere within that measurement aperture, a dimming occurred. I don't know where it occurred, but somewhere out of all the total intensities that came into that measurement aperture, something dimmed. The red, line, the red dots represent individual photometry, and it's Europa's light relative to Io. So I normalized Europa by Io, and bingo, again, here's a completely other event that shows that the moon that was behind Io was the source of the dimming. Um, here is our sort of checksum. 